So Windows 10 is coming to an end in less than two months from today's date, and a lot of people are starting to ask themselves, what now? Should you upgrade? Will it affect your performance? And what about privacy or online account or TPM or the tons of other not so cool things that come with Windows 11, like shoving Copilot down our throats, for example? But hey, by the end of this video, you'll have all these questions answered, including FPS benchmarks to help you make the best decision of whether you should upgrade or stick to Windows 10 for good. For this test to make complete sense, we used a 7-year-old Intel 7400 and tested Valorant, Fortnite, and CS2 across most Windows releases from the last five years. But before we get to the video, I'd like to invite you to enter our summer giveaway where one of you will win an RX 9070 XT at the beginning of September. It's not long left now, so join our Discord and get your entries today. So first things first, let's start with some privacy concerns most people have when it comes to upgrading from Windows 10 to 11, one of them being the online account requirement. This used to be fairly easy to skip with the widespread bypass NRO method, which sadly no longer works in later Windows 11 builds. So are you stuck with having to use an online account? Well, not really. Simply press Shift and F10 when you are asked to log into your account and type the command shown on the screen. This will instantly switch to a local account and you'll be good to go. And if you're looking for something more advanced, download Privacy Sexy and run their standard preset. It consists of nearly 4,000 lines of code that disables things like diagnostic data, ads, telemetry, and of course, enhances privacy by a lot. But if this is not your cup of tea and you wish there was simply a really clean version of Windows 11 so you don't have to run thousands of scripts, I got you. We made a file that literally takes care of everything once you start the Windows 11 setup, from local account to privacy settings, bloat removal, and much more which you can see on the screen right now. Simply grab the auto unattend file from our Discord, drop it into the root directory of your Windows installation media, and proceed with the installation as usual. The file is open source and can be viewed and edited by you anytime if necessary. For number two, there's another issue people are really not happy about, and it's the fact that Windows 10 users are now starting to be forced to upgrade to Windows 11 whether they like it or not. This means you might not even have a choice to cancel the update, but only delay the inevitable for a short period of time. And the fact that you can pause updates for only five weeks doesn't make it any better. So if you'd like to pause them for up to 10 years, I'll leave the registry path down in the video description. And don't worry, you can always resume them whenever you like. Now moving on to number three, and it's time to talk about performance degrading security features. We all know nowadays that every anti-cheat requires most security features to be enabled, while some even take it to the next level and literally stop you from choosing how many cores you want to run the game on. But either way, we ran a few extensive tests on all three types of PCs, so you know what to expect. We'll start off with the results from Counter-Strike 2 and our low-end PC. Then we'll have a look at our mid-range setup. And finally, let's see if anything changes on our high-end one. Judging by the benchmarks, the more powerful your PC is, the less you'll be affected by having VBS and other security features enabled. The same was the case with Fortnite. We saw a 9.4% increase on our low-end PC, then 2.2% on the mid-range, and 1.5% on the high-end. It wasn't much different in Valorant, with the low-end setup getting a 5.5% increase, then 1.4% on the mid-range, and 1.8% on the high-end. And while the difference seemed to be bigger in older Windows builds, it's looking pretty negligible now, especially for any mid-range PC and above. But before we see number four, if you enjoy informative PC tweaking videos that are straight to the point, please smash that subscribe button. And if you're looking to get your setup tuned for a top performance, you know where to go. Framesandclabs.com, the biggest PC optimization platform in the world. Now moving on to number four, and this is an important one. Choosing whether to pick Windows 10 or 11 isn't an easy task by itself, but you wait until it comes to picking the right release. We tested all major Windows releases from 2021 to 2025, including LTSC and consumer versions, but now let's see if it makes a difference in performance or if it's just personal preference. We saw up to nearly 18% FPS boost in CS2 with Windows 11 23 H2, and the worst was LTSC 2024. The difference wasn't that big in Valorant, but there was still a decent 9% FPS boost with Windows 10 22 H2. In Fortnite, on a low-end PC of course, it performed up to 15% better on Windows 10 LTSC 2021 when compared to every other version. Input lag-wise, obviously I could only test it on my own PC, which resulted in slightly lower latency when using Windows 11. 
This was only a quick benchmark, but I highly doubt you'll see a huge input latency difference unless you have an older system, in which case, I'd definitely stick to Windows 10. I'll also leave the official CPU support list for Windows 11 in the video description so you can check it out whenever you like. Now moving on to number 5, another issue people have reported with Windows 11 is that some anti-cheats simply don't work or they can't play their favorite games. Now, this wasn't the case for us and everything worked flawlessly, but since Windows 11 requires TPM and secure boot, you'll have to make sure your motherboard supports it. This most likely won't be an issue for those with motherboards released in the past 10 years. The easiest way to check if you have a TPM is to type tpm.msc in the Windows search bar, then click on the top result, and if it says TPM version 2, you're good to go. However, if there's no FTPM present, you can get a physical module that plugs right into your motherboard. It typically costs around 30 bucks, but make sure to check your motherboard manual to confirm it has a TPM header before you buy anything. If it doesn't, you can either buy a new motherboard or simply stick to Windows 10 for the time being. And also related to this, let's talk about number six. As we previously mentioned, sticking to Windows 10 in 2025 is all fun and games until Microsoft stops all security updates and you end up losing your accounts due to newly discovered vulnerabilities. If you'd like to keep using Windows 10 for longer but with continued security updates, you can install Windows 10 LTSC. It's similar to the Pro version, but without Store, Xbox, and the usual bloat that comes with the consumer versions. And you can also pair it with the auto unattend file that we spoke about earlier in the video to make it even better. You can grab it from our Discord, along with many other free resources, and I'd also love to see you there. Now let's talk about number 7, and that's probably your most favorite topic, Windows Process Count. We all know everybody likes to flex their process count, and it's a fact that Windows 10 has less processes running in the background than Windows 11 does. It also uses significantly more RAM, which makes it not suitable for most low-end computers. First thing you should know about this is that not all processes are created equal, and most of them don't really matter. There are, of course, some that do, and to find which ones are they, please watch our other video, which is dedicated specifically to this. And if you're actually looking for Windows 11 that's lighter and feels better than Windows 10, definitely give FSOS a try. It's a fully pre-tweaked and de-bloated Windows 11 without all the unnecessary stuff that most people don't need. All of this while preserving security and compatibility with popular applications and anti-cheats. And of course, as usual, more info can be found in our Discord. Now moving on to number 8, and let's quickly talk about the Windows 11 UI. A lot of people, including myself, have complained about the general look and feel of Windows 11, which I suppose was justified. For example, you still can't move the taskbar anywhere, or even resize the start menu like you could on Windows 10. The context menu still looks odd, and the UI animations also feel a tad slower in comparison to Windows 10. However, these are things you can quickly fix with a simple tool called Explorer Patcher. It's capable of literally transforming Windows 11 to look and feel exactly like Windows 10, and you should definitely give it a try if you haven't already. I believe that when it comes to the UI, it's more of a personal preference, so please feel free to experiment with it. And if you'd rather follow a guide, CyberCPU Tech has a great in-depth video on this topic. And to avoid wasting your time by yapping for 10 more minutes, I've put together a short checklist that will help with your Windows 11 upgrade journey. I hope this answers all your questions, but if it doesn't, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. That's all for today's video. Love you all, and I'll see you in the next one.